Hey there and welcome to another one of these videos which people appear to really like so that makes me very happy because of course I like to produce content that appeals to people. I'm going to talk about some of my personal pens again. Again, in this series, no writing samples. I have done individual videos on these pens where I show you the pen but also how it writes and for most of these pens I've done individual reviews so of course then you get the, the full bit of information that you could possibly want but these videos the videos that I'm doing to like I'm doing today those are a matter of me talking about why a pen is in my collection no writing sample okay <clears throat> now to make sure these videos stay of a reasonable length I try to pick themes themes of videos themes within my pens. And the theme I selected today, we're going to look at three pens, is European pens. So I have three here for you. And in order of appearance, in order of purchasing them or acquiring them, I'll start with this one. Yard of Lead. Okay, British brand, started with mechanical pencils and they gave you enough refills that you had a yard of lead, uh, hence the name. Yard of lead, very special brand. Uh, they hand make pens. And um, this one, for example, this is the Yard of lead Viceroy Grand in the Victorian finish. As I understand it, this requires 2,000 individual hammer strikes to create this pattern, you see. So, a very interesting pen. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> that was just a little bit, sorry, let me take a sip of tea here. So, how did this pen come into my possession? Well, Yardlet and I go back quite a bit. Um, it was in 2011 that I started my, my channel on, on fountain pens. And uh, in that year, in May, I was actually in London. I went to Fortnum & Mason, uh, which is a, uh, a beautiful uh, department store, which is a nice stationery section, and they sold Yardlet pens. I bought a pen there, but it was not this pen. Um, I bought the Retro Grand, which was another great model, um, but I was kind of eyeing this in the shop, but at that point I hadn't been collecting pens for so long, which is another way of saying I had not slid down the rabbit hole so far, so I thought this was a bit expensive. But this pen, I held it in the shop, I remembered the weight of the silver, and um, it never really left my thoughts. It was always there. And although I loved my Retro Grand, uh, it was not the same as this pen. Now, fast forward a little bit. <clears throat> this was 2013. I received an email from John. <clears throat> John said, I'm thinning out my collection. Could I send you a few pens? I said, of course, very kind, etc., etc. I didn't really know what to expect. This was one of the pens that then arrived in the mail. <clears throat> and um, of course, I am I was exhilarated, super excited. Because this is it. The Yard Lead Viceroy Grand in the Victorian finish. Exactly the pen that I've been looking at for such a long time. Now, that's an interesting way as to how this pen came into my possession. But it really... Sorry. <clears throat> I don't know what it is. Um, <clears throat> Um, probably reacting to the silver and I'll probably die soon. Um, <clears throat> hashtag joke. It's a fantastic pen. Now, it's very hard to describe this when I can only use video. But first of all, this is a heavy pen. It's solid sterling silver and the weight of the silver is one of the things that makes these pens so special. Because you hold it and you feel this sort of massive weight. It's not too heavy, it's not uncomfortably heavy, but it's solid. And, I mean, you can tell, if you just look at the barrel, uh, that's, that's quite a lot of metal. That's a significant uh, thickness. So, it's very, very interesting. And even the converter on this one uh, is, is very nice. I don't think this is silver, um, but they did try to make that a bit fancy with that metal cap. And on more modern um, versions of this pen, uh, which I, I have seen and held in shops, I, I saw a more standard converter. So if they stop doing that, it's kind of a shame. 
and it has everything. It has all the hallmarks of the silver in it, uh, the sterling, uh, everything, the, the location where it was made, etc. So all those stamps are on there, and it's just such a beautiful vintage-looking pen. I mean, look at this clip. That's a very vintage uh, clip style. You can even have it engraved with your name, and I never got around to it. I'm also not sure if I really want to, because I, to me it's, it's, it's perfect just the way it is. A heavy pen, a solid pen, and it comes with an 18 karat gold nib, which um, um, the, the, the CEO of, of, um, of Yardlet once explained, I, I, I emailed them because I was unsure, that they actually use nickel plating to, uh, to match the, uh, the, the silver trim of the body of the pen. And the nib is exceptional. For some reason, it's not that it's particularly soft, it's, um, ah, someone's car. Thank you. It's not that the nib is particularly soft, but for some reason, it brings out the sheen of inks like no other. It's not exceptionally broad, it's not exceptionally soft, but any ink shades in it. And for example, even simple inks like Waterman Serenity Blue has a beautiful sheen when I use it in this pen, which is very, very interesting. And this pen is very dear to me. It's a fantastic writer, a superb writer. The nib is wonderfully smooth. It doesn't skip, it doesn't hard start. It's a solid writer. So I'm very, very grateful that, that John sent me this pen, and this is one I cannot get rid of. This one, I think, will always be in my collection. Very important. And I love it. I absolutely love that pen. The, 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 it's, what, what I think is impressive is that it's silver, but I don't think it's garish. I don't think it's gaudy. I think Yardlet has struck just the right tone to make it look classy and not make it look excessive. And that, I think, is very, very neat. Okay, so that's, that's my first pen in this trio of European pens. The second, <clears throat> the second pen that I want to talk about is a Parker Jewel Fold. But it's not any Parker Jewel Fold, it's the Ackermann Parker Jewel Fold. Ackermann Fountain Pen Shop in The Hague. Those are the people of the very nice ink bottles that everyone seems to love. They've been around for a long time, and in 2010, when they had been around for a hundred years, the shop was established in 1910, they launched this Parker Jewel Fold with a lot of throwbacks to the original Jewel Fold, like the Three Rings, for example. Very pretty orange, uh, and I, I'm just looking at my LCD screen there, but I think the camera is actually capturing this pretty well. It's not exactly the same as the orange used in the other, like the modern Jewel Folds, because that's a bit lighter. It's a very attractive, nice, old style, old sort of vintage looking orange, which I really like. I like the black uh, ends there. Then there's a black section, and this one has a vintage, uh, I always forget what it is exactly, I know there's a code you can look up, um, but it says 94 people, I know that someone is going to correct me. Um, I want to say that it was a, a stub, but it's, it's an older style nib that, that Parker doesn't make anymore. <clears throat> now, why is this pen so special to me? Well, Aziza and I were staying in a hotel, <clears throat> in The Hague. The Hague was relatively close to where we lived, <clears throat> but we went to a hotel there, kind of explore the city a bit. And of course I've been eyeing these pens for a while. Uh, there were these pens and then there was a set with a fountain pen and a ballpoint. And Aziza was going through a phase where she really liked italic nibs and stub nibs, and she still does, but she was kind of, kind of looking for them. Uh, and um, Paul, the, the shop manager, uh, came in and said, you know, I may have an old Parker stub nib in the back, let me check. So he found it and we tried it. He just put it in one of the, the Parkers they had on display, the, the jewel folds I mean they had on display and he said, how do you like it? Well, it's actually a very nice nib. So we both really liked it. Um, he said, okay, well, do you, do you want it? We said, yes. And then he said, well, what, what pen do you want me to put it on? And then I thought, you know what? Don't put it on any jewel fold, put it on yours. And that was, I think it was the last they had or the penultimate one they had, but they didn't have that many of these pens left. And that to me makes it special, because it's not just any jewel fold, it's Ackermann's jewel fold, and I, you can imagine, Ackermann's a very nice pen store, so we spent quite a bit of time there when we lived there, especially because it was 
pretty much 15 minutes away from where we lived. So it was easy, uh, easy for us to, to get there. And there's all kinds of nice details on this pen that I really like. Of course, there's the blind engraving, um, which says Ackermann. It, it also says 1910, 2010. It says Den Haag, the, uh, the Dutch word for The Hague. Um, I didn't just sneeze, in case you were wondering. Den Haag, uh, it's, uh, it's Dutch, okay? But it, it's actually not that bad. Den Haag is the informal name. The formal name of the city is Schravenhage. Dutch people always sound like they're angry. Where are you, where, where are you going today? Schravenhage! You know? <clears throat> We're not actually angry, it's just what our language sounds like. Okay, now another thing that I particularly enjoy is this was limited to 201 pens. And this is number 51. And of course, a very famous Parker model is the Parker 51. So to me, that, that just adds a little bit, even though this is not a 51. I know it's, maybe it's stupid, I don't know, but to me, that's always extra fun. But the most important thing is the memory. Nice stay in a hotel there. We had a lot of fun. We explored the city a lot. And the Hague is a city that became very dear to me. We live quite close to it, and it's a lovely city. It's very nice. It's very... Um, Amsterdam is a bit rowdy. It's very nice, but it's a bit rowdy. It's, I always tell people when they ask me, Amsterdam is sex, drugs, and rock and roll, in the most literal sense of each word. The Hague is a bit more polite, it's a bit more civilized, um, and um, I really came to, to love that city. Now, final nice touch is the finial on this cap. Now, I, let me see how I can show you this without the camera focusing on my face. There we go. So, it says Ackermann, it says 1910 to 2010, it says Den Haag again, but it also has a, a circle with three arms. The Ackermann store is located in the Passage, which is a very old... To call it a mall would be too much, but it's like a small covered shopping street. Small, small. But it has a central circus and then it has three arms. So that is commemorated in the finial on the cap, which I think is a particularly nice touch. And again, we spent a lot of time there, not just Ackermann, but in, in the Passage is also Hop and Stork. And if you're Dutch, you know what I'm talking about. That's a very, very nice uh, chocolate place. They do coffee and tea and all that, but they do very nice patisseries and chocolate and really, really good stuff. So we spent quite a bit of time there too. Um, so this, this will always be a keepsake for me of that, that period of my life. And I love it. And added to that is the fact that it has an older style, authentic Parker nib, which is a lovely writer. It has very nice line variations, very nice. It's a pretty crisp italic, so it's a lot of fun to use. And that's why this pen will always be there. I can't let this one go. Okay, so now we've had the UK, and I guess we've kind of had, what would you call Parker these days? Um, a little tough, but I... I refer to this as the Netherlands because it's it's made for a company in the Netherlands. Okay, so now we've had a UK pen, we've had a Dutch pen, and then the final one, which is more of a recent acquisition. These pens have had for a couple of years. Um, <clears throat> this one is a more recent acquisition. The Konid King Size. What's the deal with this pen? Well, I used the Konid Streamline bulk filler for a while, and I. Um, um, I was at the uh, the Tilburg Pen Show in, I think it was 2012, that was the last year that Konid, company from Belgium, was there too. And uh, they said, look, Stephen, we have a new one, the king size. And I think at that, I think, I'm not sure, I think at that point they only had the flat top version. This is the streamline, which has the rounded ends. Um, and I immediately loved it. But Every time I wanted to buy one, something happened. Something interfered, you know, something that was in my shopping cart. You, you know this feeling. It's in your shopping cart for a long time, but every time something happens, you just never end up never buying it. And then here, a couple of months ago, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to buy it. So I got it <clears throat> with a 14K double broad nib, which matches the trims of the pen. But then a very kind viewer, Kyle, uh, sent me this, this fine nib, which may look kind of silvery, but... If, if it catches the light right, you see it's more of a yellow gold. It's not a super bright yellow gold, though. Let me compare that to that jewel fall, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, I have seen more yellowish nibs. So actually, it matches the trim of the pen pretty well. 
and it's a fine nib. And I never really was a fine nib guy, but I will say this is an exceptional nib. Bock number eight, ebonite feed, very, very nice. Lovely, lovely line, uh, and I, I really, really like this. Very consistent writer, so thanks again, Kyle. I really appreciate it, because basically this nib is on here all the time now. The king size <clears throat> has a couple of very nice features, I think. One is the fact that it has... Um, uh, it has this is this metal is titanium, which is kind of cool. Um, it's a larger pen. It's it's pretty similar to a 149 Montblanc 149 in, in 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 size, but it has a way cooler filling system because the Montblanc is a piston filler, and that in itself is nice. But now look at this. Okay, I don't know how well you can see it, and I don't know if I can hold my hand this way and actually use it, but I'm gonna try. So you unscrew this, pull that out. Keep screwing that, make that lock in there, give that a half turn, and now that part comes out. Put in a bottle of ink, draw it up, rotate, keep screwing, the piston comes out, boom! Now you have a two reservoir system. So there's ink there, there's ink here, this ink does not go in there unless you want it to by moving this up. Right? So if you're flying, ink it up, put the ink back in there, close off the secondary chamber and there shouldn't really be any leakage. This is a stellar pen and I really love it. And I know Conan's very expensive, I know that, and I know that some people really object to that, I know that too. But here's the deal, try one. Try one and then see how you feel. Because I have not really spoken to anyone who bought a Conan and said, ah, oh, piece of crap. I have not seen that. The pens are made with a lot of care. It takes them a long time to make it too, but it, it, you know, it, it reaches your door pretty much perfect. Uh, as far as I know, I haven't really heard any complaints. I can say that I have not had any complaints and I really love this pen. Massive ink capacity, um, because in principle with a bit of fiddling you can fill the entire barrel, which is a lot of ink. But even if you just fill it a single time, you have a lot of milliliters of ink, and especially with a fine nib, that'll last you a long time. So, <clears throat> very, very interesting. I love it, and I'm glad I ended up buying it, um, because I think it's just a cool pen. It looks nice, the filling system is nice, number 8 nib, that's kind of cool. It writes very well, the filling system is cool, um, and you see this, I don't know if you can, can you see that, how that kind of hooks together, that, that, that black material and the metal material, uh, right from that, that piston seal, that's also the logo. Right, so there's a lot of nice eye for detail, and it's just a super comfortable pen. And I love it. It's just such a pleasure to write with, that a great purchase. <clears throat> so, today, UK, the Netherlands, Belgium, my three European pens. And I may live in Canada now, but of course I am a European. So for me that's also kind of fun. You know, it's kind of uh, like uh, the... Uh, the motherland, so to speak, um, <clears throat> and that's nice. So these pens will always be with me. I absolutely love them. Uh, guys, I hope this was interesting. I hope I haven't bored you to death, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.